Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jeff Kulikowski. Christy is off. This day in 2020, we had our first confirmed COVID case in Onondaga County. Three years later, roughly 144,000 positive cases. Let's bring in someone who's helped us throughout the pandemic. We'll continue as we enter a new phase with the virus. It is the current Onondaga County Health Commissioner, Dr. Katie Anderson. Dr. Anderson, so good to see you. Thanks for joining us live in the studio. We've done a lot of virtual stuff. It's good to see you live. Good to see you. Um, I wanna start, um, we just had Dr. Domikowski in and I kinda started him with this and I wanna start you too. Um, think back to uh, March 16th, 2020, where we were there and where we've gotten to today, reflect a little bit on those three years for me as uh, you know, as some as a doctor who really studies these kinds of things. Yeah, it's incredible to think that it's been three years. Um, and for me, so for 20 years now, I've studied emerging viruses and we had some previews to this pandemic. We had mm. H1N1, then we had Zika, then we had chikungunya. And so in a lot of ways, COVID was predictable and totally unexpected at the same time. Oh, yeah. um, it was, the last three years were at times very positive and exciting. We had some great successes like mRNA vaccines come out of this, but it was also a really challenging, challenging three years. I'm not going to make you put your health commissioner hat on just uh, just yet. I want to know um, what kind of impact you think this uh, pandemic and COVID has had in our, on our community. How, how well have we done in central New York? I'm not worried about the rest of the country, but how have we done with it? I think our community did really well in responding to the pandemic. And in fact, it's one of the reasons why I wanted to take this position with the health department. Mm -hmm. There was a spirit of diverse people from different backgrounds, diverse organizations coming together to work collaboratively and creatively. And it was really inspiring. Currently, I'm concerned that our community is more vulnerable than we need to be. Mm. Um, we are under vaccinated as a community. And at this time when we thankfully have tools we didn't have in 2020, like Paxlovid, like the bivalent booster, mm -hmm. we're not taking advantage of them, of them as much as we should be. So I now put your health commissioner hat on. Um, what are you doing as the health commissioner as we look forward? Is that one of the things we talked to Dr. Domikowski? I mean, the vaccination rates for kids are, are woeful at best. Um, adults, I guess, somewhat better. Um, is that a big focus for you as health commissioner now to get people to understand they still need to be vaccinated? That's still important. Yeah. So that's amongst other things yeah, right. um, that we're Many. focusing on Many. in the health department. Um, we still can't take our eyes off COVID. And one area that we're really trying to message and get the word out right now is that we know that Paxlovid saves lives, the drug that can treat um, COVID. Mm -hmm. We know that the bivalent booster saves lives and prevents severe disease. But despite that, if we look at nationwide, 86% of deaths actually occur in individuals 65 or older, and only a minority of them are up to date on their vaccine, and only a minority of them actually get Paxlovid when they're ill. So that means that preventable deaths are occurring and we need to keep messaging around this. Um, uh, clearly, Onondaga County is not the only ones. I mean, pretty much everybody has gone this route, but with, with testing and data collection all but gone, I mean, how do you and your team at the health department kind of keep track of how much COVID is in our community and where we should be concerned and where maybe there are uh, outbreaks uh, occurring? Yeah, there's no question. It's a somewhat challenging time for monitoring with data. We know that the cases that are reported are a vast underestimation of mm -hmm. what's likely going on out there. And some of that reflects that there's wider availability of rapid home tests, which is actually a good thing. Yeah. Um, but we can't take our finger off the pulse. Um, we sit here still at risk for a surge that could overwhelm our already overwhelmed health systems. So at the health department, we're watching critical indicators like um, hospital beds occupied oh, overall okay. and by COVID. We are looking at um, variants in circulation, so sequencing, mm -hmm. um, and we are looking at wastewater because we think that that is more um, of a true reflection of the total burden. Um, maybe last one for you. They said I got about a minute left with you. Um, how flexible, is that one of the things that maybe we have learned from the pandemic is how your health department um, can be flexible when things pop up, whether it is some new strain of COVID or something like that, or something else uh, that you handle, which is so many things. Yeah, I think that's a really important question. And so we do have lots of health needs, pressing in our community right now, but there will be another pandemic. It's not a question of if, it's a when. So we need to make one of our main priorities preparing for that. How do we pivot when something comes up mm -hmm. so that we can keep doing what we need to do in the community? Dr. Anderson, I uh, can't thank you enough. I told Dr. Domikowski for all your time, you know, virtually through the pandemic, but also, you know, to be here live tonight. Uh, we really appreciate it. I know we'll be talking a lot thank you. more in the future. Thanks for being here. Well, in